the last injection that we'll be discussing is the mental block. Okay, so we're going to be aiming for the mental foramen, which is just slightly distal to the second mandibular premolar. Now, the mental block is really good for anything that's premolar forward to the, to the midline. So we're talking our two premolars and our mandibular lower incisors. And this injection is also very good for any type of lip lacerations, if you have to do any type of suturing in the chin or, or have any lacerations on the lip in this lower area, you can use this block. Now, why would I choose to use the mental block, which is, once again, in the premolar area, versus the inferior alveolar nerve block, which is way back, which is I consider basically our main block for our molars, is because we have some anatomical structures in the way with our inferior alveolar nerve. Okay, so with the inferior alveolar nerve, we have a core, which is the central nerve, okay, that, that, that runs along the man mandible, and you also have the, man the mantle, okay, so, the, so we have the core and the mantle. Now, the mantle is all of the myelinated sheath that is around the actual nerve bundle itself, okay, so when you use an inferior alveolar nerve block and you inject the anesthetic, it takes a little bit of time for that anesthetic to traverse through the mantle to get into the core of the nerve and then also travel anteriorly. Okay, so if I use the inferior alveolar nerve block to anesthetize a lower incisor, number one, most of my anesthetic is going to be already used up by the time it travels or traverses all the way to the incisor area, number one. And number two, it's going to take some time for that anesthetic to actually work because it needs to get through the mantle to actually get into the core and then travel to where it needs to work. The mental block, the, 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 the nerve is way more myelinated closest to the bundle, okay, which is further posterior. So it's a lot thicker in the back than it is in the front. As the nerve comes towards the incisors, the myelination and the sheath gets a lot thinner. Therefore, the anesthetic doesn't have as much work to do. Okay, so the mental block will A, work faster, and B, it's not going to use up all of your anesthetic as it travels to where it needs to work. So once again, my favorite block when I'm working on premolars or mandibular incisors, I would choose to use the mental block versus an inferior alveolar nerve block. So, pretty simple. We're going to be aiming for the depth of the vestibule. Here's my second premolar. This is my first mandibular premolar. And I'm pretty much going to be going just slightly distal of the first premolar, almost in between the first and the second premolar. Now, you can easily just aim for the center of the premolars. The mental block is fairly easy block. You won't miss this block. You can just go right in the center of the two premolars into the depth of the vestibule and bury your 30 gauge short needle and you will not miss that block. So once again, I'll dry the tissue. Now place my topical anesthetic there. We will fast forward five minutes or so. Take that out. Here again, I'm using a 30 gauge short. I'm gonna pull the patient's cheek way out so I can really see the depth of that mandible or the vestibule. And I'm not going to go too, too close to the, to the mandible, okay, because I don't want to hit bone. I'm going to come slightly out right to what we call the depth of the, the vestibule, that deepest part of the vestibule. And I'm going to lightly inject right underneath the tissue, just superficially, and inject a little bit of anesthetic there. I will stop, and then I will just slowly bury down to the hub of the needle and inject the remainder of the carpule. I like to save about a quarter of the carpule 
to inject slowly as I'm coming out. So I'm actually coming out now and I'm slowly injecting that last quarter carpule. And we're done. Now, one thing that I will tell you is that if a patient is having dental pain and their level of pain is severe, um, for instance, if you're using lidocaine for an inferior alveolar nerve injection, one carpule of lidocaine is really not going to be enough, okay? We've talked about the core and mantle of the nerve and how much the anesthetic, how much work the anesthetic has to do. So typically for profound anesthesia and to really give the patient uh, some, some relief, number one, I would, if the patient's medical history allows for it, I would recommend using some epinephrine, okay? So that's lidocaine, uh, that's septicaine, that's, that's something that has some epinephrine in it because we want that vasoconstriction. The vasoconstriction of the vessels is actually what's going to cause most of the uh, profound anesthesia. Uh, once I've given something with epinephrine, then I would probably follow up with something long-lasting like marcaine or bupivacaine. That's going to give the patient anywhere from four to six hours of relief depending upon um, how much they, uh, how quickly they metabolize the anesthetic. The other thing that I would recommend is a, a regimen of 600 milligrams of ibuprofen combined with 650 to 1,000 milligrams of Tylenol taken at the same time. The patient can take that anywhere from six to eight hours, and I would recommend that they take their first dose immediately after administering the anesthetic so that once the anesthetic wears off, they already have the anti-inflammatory and the pain med on board uh, to help them. Um, but to recap, I would definitely want, recommend, if the patient's medical history allows for it, something that has epinephrine in it to get the vasoconstriction, and then you can do one or two carpules for longer-lasting anesthetic. Anywhere on the maxilla, it's easier to get a patient profoundly numb. Okay, you don't have as much bone. Uh, to, the, the, the cortical plate is not as thick, so the anesthetic doesn't have as much job to do um, as the myelinated nerve bundle to the mandible, okay? The, the cortication or the bone is a lot thicker, a lot more dense on the mandible than on the maxilla. And you have the nerve that's encompassed within the sheath um, of myelinization and everything that we talked about that the anesthetic has to get through in order to actually work. So it takes almost twice as much anesthetic to anesthetize the mandible as it does for the maxilla. Whereas for the uh, PSA, or the ASA or the intra infraorbital injection, you may only take a maximum of two carpules. I would recommend the, if a patient has severe dental pain on the mandible to at least use three to four carpules, and that being something with epinephrine and something long-lasting like bupivacaine or marcaine. Thank you very much for your attention, and I hope this helps.